Good morning, everybody. My name is Abricky. I talk about the Warhammer stuff and other things every so often. And in a video I did a couple days ago, I talked about my feelings on the campaign and the co-op missions, general gameplay, and so on. And, you know, for the most part, I was pretty disappointed by a lot of the aspects of the campaign, but thought that the gameplay and the co-op stuff would actually hold it up pretty well because that's a big, visceral, gory mess. I could not talk about the PvP yet because there were no players for PvP because it was the review code. I have now played this amount of PvP and oh boy do I have opinions. But first before I jump into that, an important news announcement. Right now as the video goes live, there is a massive free worldwide shipping sale for all GamerSup's orders if you use the code BRICKY. That's right, not just domestic, worldwide international free shipping no matter your order size right now go ahead check out the description it's gamersubs.com slash bricky use code bricky as well you get 10 percent off in addition and if you are not sure what to get i would highly recommend the sweet six pack flavor it's my personal flavor it is a top five in many people's lists i've been told and by that i mean i could be spreading propaganda but that's okay highly also recommend checking out the other flavors like raw meat which is actually not raw meat it's incredible and the guacamole gamer subs 9000 by russian badger himself uh, there's an incredible amount of various types of flavors out there but also there's shaker cups other kinds of merchandise there's a lot of things to try out and especially if you're overseas internationally i would recommend you know stocking up now while that you get the free shipping uh, that only lasts for one week though so you got one week to do that so check it out link in the description code bricky so space marine one had a multiplayer it and then back in 2010 era it's 2011 the game came out but the 2010s you know between like 2008 to 2012 give or take a lot of video games were single player shooter games that had a tact on multiplayer that was really just there to well you know slam that shit at the end because you needed a multiplayer because that's what sold the big bucks at the time um how times change kind of and for a lot of people, myself included, when I remember playing it back when, that uh, multiplayer was very fine. It was kind of mediocre and generally just whatever, as again, tacked on. But I remember it being surprisingly fun. Uh, like, this is clearly some kind of afterthought. This is clearly just to sell things or extra things for the time. But I but I remembered it being a little too good for it being an afterthought. And that was one of the things that I also remembered because one of my favorite multiplayers of all time is Mass Effect 3's multiplayer, which was also clearly a, a late term tacked on thing that ended up blossoming into a genuinely incredible multiplayer experience because I guess they just were that good at it. I've played Space Marine 2 for a little over 30 hours now and decided to dabble in the multiplayer at around hour 20, give or take, for some streams along with the Adirate crew and folks. And I remember playing the first game and thinking, wait a minute, this is good. This is kind of great. And I've become mildly addicted to it as of lately. Uh, now, make no mistake, this is very similar to Massive, not Mass Effect, uh, Space Marine 1, which is this multiplayer feels incredibly tacked on to the game. It has a myriad of issues that are all related to the fact that the game definitely did not release when it should have. This game absolutely needed a few more months, and there are a ton of reasons for that. Uh, people are, I, I ironically have not had any optimization problems, but many others have had bad ones. Crashes at startup, uh, server issues is a big part. That's first day um and also a lot of other weird stuff but this multiplayer i have to tell you it's been really fun so it's a 6v6 mode with currently three different kinds of game modes your standard team deathmatch you have a domination style where it's three flags and you hold them for points and then there is something that would often be called hard point if you're a cod player or king of the hill i guess if you're elsewhere i don't know uh, basically one point that moves around the map that you need to hold for as long as you can for points uh, their names are something it's like seize ground capture and hold and annihilation or something like that 
Uh, ironically, and this is more towards the reason why I think it's kind of a tacked on thing, is that when you mouse over those different game modes on the menu, it doesn't tell you what they are, which is hilarious to me you literally just go to it it's like oh I, I what's annihilation like i'm gonna play that and you just it won't tell you you just don't know what the game modes are it's just the name which is hilarious to me uh you can kind of assume that annihilation is tdm but the other two i mean I, you don't know it's not a really big deal you know i just click quick match every time regardless but it is kind of funny regardless though that all that all that aside um it is 6v6 and they restrict you to two of each class so you cannot have six snipers or anything like that you can only ever have two of each class per team which for some might seem overly restricted i disagree i think it's actually a very good idea because there can be some weird shenanigans that happen depending on which classes get spammed uh, and basically you know as i said earlier you go out there and uh, you do those three types of game modes as for the actual gameplay of it as ter like, terms of like time to kill and stuff it feels about halo-y uh, when it comes to time to kill i'd say about halo um longer than call of duty but still a little faster than you'd expect um i think that maybe it's actually a little bit quicker than halo in general so like maybe a little bit of a, of a middle ground but it also depends on the class you're playing and the weapons you're using uh, each class has its standard weapons that you can take and you don't get a ton of variance depending on which is which that's obviously for multiplayer things but also there is a good bit of balance adjustments per class for example the jetpack assault guy gets three charges on his jetpack and they definitely recharge much quicker the heavy of course has the iron halo but it doesn't last nearly as long as it would and the bulwark has like his usual big flag and all that stuff but it doesn't get any of the fancy effects that you get in co-op so on and so forth uh, one of the biggest changes that i've noticed is that the vanguard the grapple hook character can actually grapple not just to enemies but also grapple to walls and things and use it as a positional advantage and movement tech which is a running theme uh, that goes along with the idea that as i played through the game and i was fighting people i was just realizing how good it felt to fight other players and despite being definitely like a late stage choice they really took their time in thinking about how each character and each gun and everything works in this mode now if there's something incredibly overpowered i haven't seen it yet because not everyone has all the weapons i'm a little worried about what the heavy with a multi melta will do if he's just going to become an unstoppable close range force of nature but for example uh when you have the game you of course have armor and you have health naturally uh, as you do in the main game however when you get shot it breaks down your armor and then starts to break down your health but if you get stabbed in melee it goes right through your armor so when you're actually engaging in melee combat there is no armor to be worried about which is a really interesting balancing choice because that makes melee combat rather rather effective when it comes to just you know getting in on your opponent and, and running them down because then they don't you don't need to chew through their armor whatsoever that's very neat and it helps out a lot with how they they balance the the general game because your armor will regenerate as usual but then slowly after that your health will very slowly regenerate too if you survive a fight but it is pretty darn slow so because the armor regenerates so quickly if you take fire from you know just someone poking their head out you can get that crap back really quickly but if it's some kind of like real scrap you actually do need to play it safe for a little bit and then there comes the classes and because there's only two of each type at any point in time i kind of felt like every single match i played a certain class was the overpowered class and then my mind shifted immediately the next game. For example, heavy seems like it's insane. The heavy bolter does an extreme amount of damage. They get four separate pips when it comes to armor, as some people get three or two. Uh, only two people get four pips, them in the bulwark. And then the iron halo, of course, blocks bullets, which in a shooting PvP game is very good. Rainbow Six Siege players, Blackbeard, PTSD, etc. So often I would be dealing with these heavy guys and just realize, oh my god, like I can't even get in on these people. They just gun 
pinned me down consistently. And even if I do get in melee, which is the heavy's weakness, as they have no melee weapon, it doesn't really matter because they're still just shooting me the whole time and I can't really do anything about this so that is definitely a thing where I'm like damn the heavy is is so powerful it's so like this is clearly the strongest class this is going to need a nerf and then I think okay I'm I'm trying to think ahead of it right you know it's like you're trying to like anti-meta I immediately think in my brain okay heavy is going to be the meta got it How do I tech to be good at killing heavies? And my first thought was, well, what about the bulwark? Because the bulwark is a shieldy guy, and he has this giant flag that restores armor, which is how you defeat gun, and heavy is all gun. So I started playing bulwark and realized that, like in the game, in the the PvE, etc., when you sprint, you hold your shield up that blocks ranged attacks. Well, in PvP, if you sprint, you block... 100% of the range damage you take. You cannot take gun damage when you're a bulwark running at people. Or, and, or at least for a period of time in which then you start to actually get like really slowed. Um, I noticed I was like charging a heavy and then he like slowed me basically to a crawl because he was hitting me with so many gunshots. But you basically take no damage. And as you walk around, you can hold L1 if you're on gamepad, which is like the parry button, and just block all range damage. So very often I would like see a heavy and I would just charge his ass and the heavy would unload into me. And even if he would slow me, it wouldn't much matter because either I would reach him and he would be overheated or, you know, not ready to deal with me, and then I would just beat him up and kill him that way, or my teammates would team shot him or team shoot him while I am blocking all of his bullets. And if he dares swap targets, awesome, I'm going to shoot him with my pistol or stab him. And then plus that, you know, you have the banner that regens your team's shields or armor that is. It feels like shields. And I'm like, damn, the Bulwark is insanely good. I think the Bulwark might actually be the real overpowered class. And then I thought to myself, well, how am I going to deal with Bulwarks? And then I realized the grapple hook of the Vanguard turns out the grapple is a stun also. If you grapple players, it stuns them. So I found Bulwark players that were blocking all my shots, and I would just grapple them, slam into their face, and start stabbing the shit out of them. And it would not always work, but sometimes it would. And then if my team is with me, grappling the Bulwark puts their shield down, and then they can shoot the shit out of them. And soon I realized, wait a minute, the Vanguard is really good because I can grapple walls, which gives me unparalleled mobility across the map and making crazy flanks and other shenanigans which is just really cool and then over and over and over it went a lot of people believe the sniper class is overpowered uh, because the snipers hit really hard and their cloak is like you can kind of see them but in the thick of it you can't see crap at first i thought the sniper class was kind of bad because the sight lines for snipers were only good on a couple maps and then I unlocked the SMG for the sniper, and turns out cloak and dagger is a great method for the game. So I hit my cloak, run behind people, uncloak, and just mag dump them in the back of the head, and they have no idea what's going on. And then I'll just stab the next guy when I run out of ammunition. It's an extremely gremlin ability and infuriating to fight, I'm positive, but I've been doing it a lot, and it's very good. The the only class that I actually think is not very good is the assault class, which I'm really sad about because, you know, it's the Night Lord class. Uh, but the jetpack class is not lovely. Um, I think the biggest issue is that it only has two armor plates. And, you know, when you fly in the air and you get the drop on somebody and you slam on the ground, yeah, especially with a thunder hammer, you do a ton of damage and basically just kill them. But for the most part, if you're in the air, you're exposed and people will shoot you because, of course, they will because you're in the air and they have guns. So for the most part, I found that the assault class is not particularly good, but that might be a me thing. I have had moments where I'm getting flanked or something and I just like bounce around with the jetpack like joop, 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 and they can't hit me. And it can be kind of neat, but... I don't know, I, food to taste. I think it has only two armor plates for the assault class. It might need three. That might be the change I would ask for, but I'm not 100% sure yet.
The tactical class is actually kind of insanely good too. The Auspex scan is a short cooldown, makes enemies take more damage, but it sees them through walls and keeps them highlighted for a while. So it's a really good way to basically like wall hack your opponent and know when they're going to peek and all that fun stuff. Plus, very few classes have weapons as good as the tactical class. The tactical class has like the heavy bolt rifle and all the main bolt rifles and in a 1v1 gunfight besides the heavy no one's going to beat the tactical class in just a, a actual bout and it's crazy to see because i load into games and it's almost a perfect spread of people i mean sometimes there's two heavies and stuff but you can change your class whenever the hell you feel like it so there's always a way to do a counter and it's just so meaty the gameplay it's really fun. Now, there's some things I'm not so sure about. Like, when you get into a melee fight with someone, I, I get this kind of feeling that maybe it's a little bit just who swings first. Because often, most of the time, the weapons have the same DPS or whatever, even though it's the same combos. And so there's a little bit of like, okay, well, whoever swings first wins this. But then there's also, like, blocking. Like, you can't seem to parry. Pairing doesn't really exist in the multiplayer, as far as I'm concerned. I've tried it a lot. It doesn't seem to work. But you can block. And I was wondering, is there a tech for proper blocking? For example, Chainsaw. If you use the Chainsaw, you swing, 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 and then you do this big spin swing that's really slow. And then, then that's your combo is over. I wonder, if we're swinging together chain swords, if I swing at him like twice, and then I start to block, that last swing takes a lot of time for him to wind up. If I can block that final swing and his combo's over, can I attack him right after that and then therefore get the advantage because he doesn't have enough time to recover and I can get my hits in first? So it can be like swing, swing, block, block, swing, swing. Th that's like the question, right? And then there's like the thunder hammer, which is an impossible question. Um, but you know, I was trying to deal with a bulwark because he has shield up and I couldn't kill him. And then I remembered, wait a minute, this game is a shield bash. That's right, and I shield bash the bastard, and then he got staggered, and I killed him after that. I was like, oh, yeah, th that's right, you can shield bash people, you know? That's a thing from the, the PvE, that's a thing in the PvP. And then but also there's other times, like if I'm playing as a guy and I'm getting attacked by someone, I might just start blocking and then have my teammates near me shoot him to death while he's tunnel visioning on me. There's a weird amount of depth in this game. It's bizarre how much it is which is unfortunate because it, it's very clearly not done um there's three game modes in total that don't tell you what to do you can't swap game modes to this area without joining a match automatically basically you have to like hopefully not join immediately and then like cancel your queue there's no just swapping lobbies which is really weird there's only three maps only three maps which is kind of wild there should have been like at minimum six. Even six is kind of low. Uh, now, granted, it's only six v six. There's only one kind of size, but like three maps, man. Come on, that that's a little bit silly. And then the actual progression of it is a very classic shooter. You just basically level up your guy and unlock new guns and weapons for various classes, and that's all that you do. Um, you do earn the same golden currency that you do in other matches, and honestly, I think it's actually one of the better ways to earn it. I feel like I earn a lot of it, which helps you for customization, but the only extra customization you get in the game outside of the armor you unlock is the weapons, so it makes your weapons look fancy, and that's about it. So there's not like a whole lot of progression. There's not like a whole lot of fancy stuff to do. But even with that, I gotta be honest, out of the three things in this game, campaign, PvE, and PvP, the campaign is fine. I don't love it much. The co-op is pretty darn good. Uh, but this PvP, this is my favorite part. I'm shocked at how fun this is. It's just so addicting and also... Uh, when you play as the heretic Astartes, which you can't customize, which I'm really annoyed by, like, come on, you, you're not allowed to customize your heretic Astartes, which is really sad because I want to play Night Lord's dress up, of course. You can like, customize their paint, but that's it. It's kind of dumb. But all the chaos guys have their own voice lines. Now, this is a double edged sword because unfortunately, they did not get enough people to record voice lines for the game. 
uh, which is really annoying because you are going to hear the servants of the corpse god claim the objective nine million times. They don't have any other voice lines for this for some reason. Maybe it's a bug. Um, but you normally record like three to four. It's the servants of the the, 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 the the servants of the corpse god claim the object. They do it all the time. I maybe hear it 15 times a game. It's insane. But the actual characters, the ones you play as, have voice lines specific to their legion. Which is awesome. The uh, it's Black Legion for tactical, Night Lord for assault, World Eater for vanguard, uh, Death Guard for bulwark, Alpha Legion for sniper, and Iron Warriors for heavy. I was playing Iron Warriors, activated my Iron Halo, and he said Iron within, Iron without. I respawned, and he said, uh, uh, "I will uh, like avenge, or not avenge. I will serve Parcharabo, whatever the hell." Um, someone else like died on my team and he basically said, uh, weakness is punished all like regular iron warrior stuff. The death guard guy might be my favorite, uh, cause he just arrives into the game and spouts about decay, but you slam your big flag down and he just does this, like the grandfather's gifts and blessings are upon us. And it's just this like disgusting, awesome VA. It's a ton of fun. Um, you know, the world eater has a hook. You know, he has like the grapple hook, but he always thinks of it like like a skewer hook. So, of course, he will fly in there and just like start laughing maniacally like blood skulls, spines for the blood god and all of that stuff. It's super fun. And the Night Lord dude obviously has this very low terror voice and, you know, and, you know, the usual stuff. Randomly, you'll hear him just reload and he'll just say something like swapping magazine with that, that low draw. It's super fun. I, I wish they gave more emphasis to this because it makes me want to just play Chaos Space Marines. It's lovely. I don't know, like, it's it's crazy. Every time I join a game, I'm sitting there, like, always sunny in Philadelphia, like, please, chaos, please, chaos, please, chaos, please, chaos, please, chaos. And then you just you pump your fist when you get chaos, like, yes! It's so fun, man. I just, it's so fun. Um, I really like the PvP. It's way better than I thought it was going to be. It's definitely not finished. It's definitely tacked on. But damn, am I having a total blast. Uh, if you haven't played it yet, I would recommend it. If you're not a big like PvP shooter guy, you know, whatever, this probably won't like convince you or anything, but I am I'm loving it. I'm loving it McDonald's style. Yeah, I just want to talk about that um a little bit. Just want to chat a little bit about that. Let you all know what's going on and that whole thing. Talk about just how much I'm enjoying it and how much fun it's being, so on and so forth. It's good. It's really, really good. Anyway. Give it a shot. I'm probably going to be streaming it maybe a little bit later today or something, or um, definitely this weekend a little bit more. So come by, stick around. Hopefully the servers work, goddamn. Uh, and yeah, and don't forget, uh, check out Gamer Subs down below. Use code Bricky for 10% off. You only get one week uh, to get free international shipping. So hit it. All right. I'll see you all later.